Hello everyone, this is Dr. Archangel, and I am here with a rather different installment of Dungeons and Daily Dragons. Now, the reason this one is a tad different is because this time, I'd like to review a certain movie I saw this week. So, at exactly 5.15pm on the 26th of January, 2018, me and a close friend of mine took our recliner seats and we saw The Death Cure. Now, the reason I'd like to give this a review is because, personally, this is a movie that I'm sure you will likely add to your list of unforgettable movies. Because I'm certainly going to. So I thought I'd like to share my thoughts with you all, to show you why. Now, before I begin my review, I just want to clarify that I have read all three books, excluding the prequels, sadly. I just want to throw that out there for personal reasons. Alright, now then, let's get started. Uh, if you recall in the last movie, The Scorch Trials, Mina was kidnapped and Teresa went with him as a traitor. This current film, The Death Cure, takes place a few months after those horrific last few events. Throughout the movie, the group sets out to find Mino, and through their searching, they found the last known city in perhaps the entire world, Denver, Colorado, owned by the one and only corrupt corporation known as Wicked. Now, in the end, after all that was said and done in Denver, in the movie, it wrapped up on a rather subtle ending, and left me wanting more. And I won't be getting that, due to the fact that this was the concluding movie to the trilogy. What drew me in, for the most part, was the good balance of action and storytelling. Uh, I believe the director, Wes Ball, he did a mighty fine job with this movie. Uh, usually directors in this genre of movies, they direct one movie and the sequel is given to someone else. But this one, the director stuck with the trilogy all the way to the end. For that reason alone, he has my respect. My favorite scene in this whole movie would have to be the one where Thomas, Newt, and Frypan were driving through a tunnel, and all of a sudden, they saw a crank in the middle of the road. They were preparing to drive slowly around it, but then more of them started surrounding them rather quietly to my amazement. There was a sense of horror and suspense in this scene, where again, most of the cranks were quietly walking up to the truck. Uh, for example, when the camera was transitioning from Newton Frypan over to Thomas in the back seat, there was this lady beside him at the truck door. The person next to me watching the scene didn't even notice the woman until she started yelling and forcing the door open. I can tell you that he jumped hard with no idea of that woman being there. My favorite character would have to be Thomas himself, played by the quite talented Dylan O'Brien. He, in my opinion, gave the best performance in both his character stunts and acting. I'm going to assume that he's done his own stunts in this movie. Uh, if you remember in the news a year ago, they said he had to hold back production due to his his injuries. So, uh, in this movie, he was shown to be a real action hero from the start of this movie to the end. Starting from his development to a curious youngster with no memory but his own name, going up an elevator with supplies, to a brave, action-packed badass jumping out a window from several stories above. I'd say what really has Thomas in my favorites list would be his character development. The music alone really set the tone for the movie. Like going back to the tunnel scene I was talking about, um, as the scene was going on, we saw the crank, and between the time we saw the crank and the one beside the truck, there was no music, and then it eventually grew louder and more eerie. It really did well. There was another scene that had good music, but since it's a rather major plot point in the movie, uh, I'm not going to talk about it due to spoilers. But I can tell you this, compared to what happened in the book and to this movie, the music really hit me harder than how the book did, personally. Now, to wrap up this whole review, I'd like to give this movie a 9.7 out of 10 for good directing, camera work, 
acting, action, and storytelling. The only downside I would say was that there was no after credits scene to explain this one little detail that could have been useful for those who haven't read the books. Now for my message to all of you, I highly recommend this movie with every bone in my body. And now, my review, like this trilogy, has ended. Now if you liked this little review, I would be honored to do more if you'd like. I would also greatly appreciate it if you give that like button a click, and if you want to stay updated on my videos, you can subscribe too. Now as always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter down below in the description, and as always again, I'll see you next time.